Mine is Aaron Smith-Levin, and I was a Scientologist for about 29 years. My name is Claire Headley, and I was a Scientologist for 30 years. My name is Mark Headley, and I was a Scientologist for 25 years. My name is Mike Rinder. I was a Scientologist for 46 years. What's the Church of Scientology so afraid of? This, this is SPTV. Hello, hello, hello. We all hey know guys. what Scientology is so afraid of, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> yes, sirree. Oh, afraid. my God. What a crazy week it's been. <sighs> crazy week yep. it's been. It just started. <laughs> it's my Monday, weeks right? Don't, my weeks don't run Monday to Monday like like the Wog World. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's, he, he's a Thursday at two guys still. Oh, oh so he's already yeah. had... He's already yeah. had Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's true. He's already had four yeah, he's days of the week. Yeah, halfway through the week. Yeah. Whoa, Manza. <laughs> oh my yep. God, Mike, you're in a you're in a nice uh, snazzy new setup. No LED lights for you. He's got no. all LED. Well, he. I've has got them. all. I've got all sorts of weird little lights here, but I'm in a weird setup. That's exactly right. In fact, I'm three doors down from Mark. That's right. I could run out of my stream into his stream if we wanted to. What about me? I have a fancy new Oh, setup. yeah. Yes. You're in the man dungeon. Cave. You're yeah. in the man cave. I feel like Mike's mic might have come unplugged. No, he oh. ha no. No. Is nope. that the same nope. laptop you use at the other place? No. Yeah, he has a totally a different setup. over there. Oh. No, yeah, no it's, he... still, it's still on my mic, He's good. Aaron. He's good. So actually, I'm just realizing, logistically speaking, Claire, I know I said you were going to star the things, but I don't. I don't know if you joined via the team entrance, because if you're oh. starring things, I don't see them. Oh, OK, let's let's work. Let's, I can star check. them, Aaron. I can star them. No, no, no. Um, I wait, did Claire, you, you're starring things, Claire. I did, yes. But I li the problem is that um Can we test something? Did you sure. see that? Yeah, but who did that? Claire or Mark? I did it. Yep, not I, me. I, I know. Okay, good. I'm out. No, so um the problem is that how do I <laughs> Are we having communication troubles, Aaron? How do no, I no. know? How do I know that the comments I'm seeing are everyone's comments if when oh. Claire stars them, I don't see them? Oh, how many have you starred, Claire? Uh, one. <laughs> okay. Do you see any starred, Aaron? Claire, is it the eighty-six GOP comment that you starred? Hold on, let me look. Hmm. No, that was not me. That was me. So, yeah. uh. uh I know that I'm. I can see what Mark stars. I just. How do I know I'm seeing everyone's comments? Yeah, you, Claire. You. Well, can here's go how out. I know. Here's I how I know. I just tried Guys. another one. I start another one. Do you see another one start? Yeah, Olivia Herbert. Yes. Okay, oh, good. We're, we're good. good. Okay. Okay. Yay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, you know. We we're are just... learning and growing on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, here. we're we're also all over the country right now. <laughs> yes. so we are in yes, strange are. locations with strange equipment. It's. Except for Aaron is not, but he but soon will, will be. But I will be next week. Oh, yes. Yeah. I will be SPTV next week. SPTV hits the big time next week. Yes. Yeah. SPTV is covering uh, the jury selection, even though the pool reporter has decided not to share uh, their notes with SPTV, believe it or not. But you know what? What, what you going to do? You can take the clown out of the circus, but you can't take the circus out of the clown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Aaron couldn't resist. He I couldn't resist. He had All right. To. So, Claire, if you're going to be the star, um, you got to start starring some stuff, lady. Yes, sir. I'm Come on, on. <laughs> it. I'm working on it. Sorry. I was distracted by a certain other task that we were talking about. My apologies. Oh, Let me oh. get back to the better oh, at I, hand. Actually, I totally, you're right. That's actually not fair. Well, why don't we, why don't we, um, uh, if we're going to show that trailer, why don't we do it closer to the beginning here than, than later on? Perfect. Are you, are you, <laughs> do you already have it uploaded? I let me check. Yes, I, it is good to go. Perfect. Okay, okay, good. Claire, give us the intro on the trailer okay. we're going to see. So, my inspiration for my next series, Where is Shelly Miscavige, stems from a few different things. Number one, I knew Shelly on a personal level for, for uh, 13 years. I worked with her 
very closely for eight years. And for four of those years, I reported to her almost daily and she actually ran me as my, as, as if she were my direct boss. And so <clears throat> knowing her personally, it struck me as, hey, let's talk about this. Shelly Miscavige is a very real person and she is very missing. And not only is she David Miscavige's wife, she is also the first lady, if you will, of Scientology. She is a very, she was the number two executive in the 14 years that I spent at Scientology's headquarters. She was at David Miscavige's side 24 seven. So, um, and obviously Leah filed the missing person report when she left Scientology, um, which was such a courageous move. Nobody ever gets in Scientology's face and stands up to them, but that was uh, really, really took courage. And not only that, I know many people who knew and worked with Shelley Miscavige personally. So I started researching her life She's now been in Scientology as of today for 58 years. She got into it when she was four years old, which was the same age I was when I got into Scientology. Um, and so, and the other piece is that the question, where is Shelley Miscavige, to me personally epitomizes everything that is wrong with Scientology in the United States of America today. So this is my trailer for my upcoming series. Shelly Miscavige. She has not appeared in public since 2005. Where's Shelly and what happened? Where is Shelly? We're looking at like 17 years of a person just missing. Shelly Miscavige was given into the sole care of L. Ron Hubbard by her parents when she was 12. This is where Shelly is believed to be being held captive. Do you believe that Shelly Miscavige is a threat today? Oh, absolutely. She's seen it all. She's been by his side the whole time. Fantastic. Nice. Boom. It's going to be great. <laughs> Boom. Yes. When do you start airing um, the segments or episodes or interviews? Great question. Um, I have five recorded so far. We will announce as soon as we know the first air date. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. By the way, the record that we set last week was like 32, somewhere between 32 and 3,400 live viewers. We're already at 2,000 almost. So, and we're not, even, we're not Second even eight boom. minutes in. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get cracking on, on some questions here. Uh, we're going to be very careful about how we answer some questions. Uh, let me tackle this one. 86 GOP, I saw featuring Danny Masterson, so I knew that I had to tune in. Are you interviewing him tonight, or has he decided to use SPTV to air his admission of guilt? Well, I'll tell you what. On, my, on the title, we all have different titles and thumbnails and video descriptions for this stream. On mine, I did featuring Danny Masterson because I've already done like two Danny Masterson videos today. Um, now, through a secret back channel connection, uh, he has offered, just like OJ wrote the book, If I Did It, he has offered to, over the weekend, while court is out of session, to do an interview with me just titled, you know, If if I Were Guilty. No, I'm just kidding. It's all a joke. Um, so <laughs> uh, that's me. I, I took that one. Thank you, guys. Um, okay. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia okay. Herbert, are Boss Baby hoodies with Dave's face too silly to be SPTV merch? That'd be a nice conversation piece, I think. I don't think that's too silly. We'd have to make sure we don't get into um, any laws preventing us from using someone else's face or likeness. But I don't know. I don't know what the laws are. If it's legal, it's definitely not too silly. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, we could do a similar thing where we just block out the face, like we block out the eyes, so you can't tell who it is. You just go, eh, you just do black right over that. And it's like, I don't know who that is. It could be I mean, Captain, I, I mean, could we be could Captain put Davy Al Pants. We, could be somebody else. Who knows? We could put Alfred E. Newman's picture on it. That's true, Boss <laughs> Baby. It could, a little Captain's outfit. Yeah. Next oh, yeah. to next to um, a character of Tom Cruise uh, <laughs> with a, a little beagle that has c commander stripes or captain stripes. Which one was it? His dog was what? I think it was Captain. 
Captain. Right, the beagles Jelly. had captain stripes. Jelly right? the beagle. Yeah, she had four stripes. Would it? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think that might have been Commander. Commander too. Commander Jelly. Jelly. Yeah. That's yep. a, that's a nice and, name for a dog, actually. I like and, Commander um, Jelly. David Miscavige said that his whole thing was Jelly typed more sense <clears throat> by running across his keyboard than anyone in int management ever possibly could. Yeah. That's the true hallmark of a leader, constantly <laughs> insulting everyone who works for you. Well, you yep. know, another thing was, is he had a dog that he, um, it was a Dalmatian kind of mix with something else. And it used to pit bite bull. people all the time. Yeah, it was a Dalmatian mix with a pit bull, which is not a good mix if you're going to mix dogs. Dalmatians have enough problems. They, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, he used to bite people and he would always say he bites the people that he, that are out ethics. And that, and that kind of worked for Dave until he bit this really old woman that worked in the editing department. She was like 80 years old and she was bringing the submission up there and the dog attacked this woman. And then um, the dog went to the doggy RPF, which by the way, that dog got banished to the RPF, the doggy RPF, which is the same place he banished Shelly to. The, he, the dog went to CST in the mountains. True story. Yep. He sent Shelly the same place. Bye bye, Magpie. So, well, no, it was Buster. So he sent. Oh, it was Buster? So, Magpie yeah. was the other one. Magpie uh, we, was the good Dalmatian. The yeah, purebred. we had a Dalmatian uh, named Max, and he had a crush on Magpie, for which <laughs> Buster kicked his rear end really yeah, Buster, hardcore. Yeah, Buster almost killed our dog it's because scary. he was getting fresh with uh, his girlfriend there, Magpie. Yeah. Oh. So did he send Jelly to Shelly or Shelly to Jelly? No, he sent Buster to the CST, but this was years before he sent Shelly to CST. Oh, I see. It I just see. established a precedent. Do you think Buster was already dead by the time Shelly got there? Uh, yeah, know, most probably. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. All right, so I don't know what this means. Let's figure it out. Uh, Nancy Ives, I've never been in Scientology, yet just said to my hubby, that could be a major flap. <laughs> Thanks, SPTV, for the new vocabulary. I get it. Yeah, awesome. that's perfect. Yeah, that's <laughs> you used it perfectly. This is yep. we got a flap on yep. our hands here. Major flap. Yep. Major yeah. flap. <laughs> what was that uh, from? Was there like a tarp on the uh, Apollo yeah, and it no, was blowing I think in the there wind? Was a, <laughs> there was a, a flag order that talked about a flap like. Mike, you probably know better than I do, but I understood it's like sheets flapping in the wind. It, it can get caught into things. And I have, I actually have no idea what the, what the <laughs> genesis of that is. Yeah, Aaron, it's it's Pick not me. a science. It's not a Scientology term. Okay. Oh, really? It's just it was just used very heavily in yeah. Scientology. It's a real word <laughs> in, in the real world. Um, and maybe it has its original derivation from some of those things. Uh, but yeah, not a Scientology term. Uh, okay. Nancy, if you want to, if you want to, um, upgrade your Scientology vocabulary, a very, very serious urgent flap is a Hill 10. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is exactly right. I was about to say that too, Aaron. We could, Hill we could 10. get, we could get, we could spread around some more Hill 10. Mike, sh use it in a sentence for us, Mike. <laughs> The the upcoming Danny Masterson trial, as far as Osaka is concerned, is a major hill ten. There yes. you go. There you go. Um, Nothing you have... good can come from that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, here's a funny one. Around the room, any tattoos? Details, please. <laughs> if not, what would you get? I do not have any tattoos. And I've always said the only thing I could ever get that I think I would never even potentially regret would be like my kids' names or something. I mean, I, but but honestly, I can't stand pain and needles. Like it's just it's not it's not happening for me. It hurts so good, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I have two. I have one on this arm and one on this arm. I was gonna get a tattoo when I left the Sea Orc just because I yeah. could. And Mark was like, don't do it, honey. No, she's pretty. She has no marks or scars. And that you don't I want any identifying marks let's in not, case law not, enforcement gets your hands on you. No, I have plenty <laughs> of scars. <laughs> and uh, I don't have any either. Yeah, you I actually, don't want they, any either. See, Mark, he's Mark his has Claire. Mark Claire has tattoo. David. Mark has David Miscavige's initials tattooed on his shoulder. 
David Miscavige, his initials. Come on. You know, when Not I got even this, one person in when the I got this, buy that. it was down here. <laughs> 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 when I, seriously, I got it when I was like 16 and it was way down on my arm. And as I grew it for somehow, I don't know. It's been moving up pretty soon. When I'm 60, it's going to be up here somewhere. That is incredible. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, let's figure out what this is referring to. Claire, what was the global bodies in the shop while you were there? Minimum, maximum, average, medium. Was that even a stat that you saw at RTC? Not at RTC, no. But that, that, that was a management stat. Yeah. Like a, you and, know. And on, honestly, I will answer this question with, who knows? That is one of those stats that is so falsified by every single organization in Scientology, it's not even worth paying attention to. Yeah. Every single organization would count. They would, you know, bring, uh, they would announce that they were having a picnic for children with coloring books and they'd bring a bunch of kids in and count them as bodies in the shop. They would cycle people around in circles going come in today for a lecture today okay come back tomorrow for another one for tomorrow it'll be 15 minutes and they would count them i mean it, it's it's just like it, it was a pointless absolutely absurd number that had no bearing on reality so yeah so though, that, that, though, Mike, isn't it true that that was actually Diana Hubbard's stat because she oh, was she was over the divisions Public that brought inflow. new people into Scientology internationally. So that was right. her statistic. <clears throat> right. They were all. I mean, Scientology has like every organization is required to report like about two hundred statistics every week, and these range from. How much money did they make to how many how much bills did they pay to how many cramming orders were completed to how many uh letters were mailed to how much promotion was sent out how many letters came in everything and the vast majority of those statistics were fudged yeah, to put I was going to say, if there's a stat in Scientology, someone's false reporting it somewhere. Someone's figured out <laughs> how figured to it make out. it untrue and <laughs> make it appear that they are doing more than they actually are. And those statistics all get counted up and added up and aggregated by continental level and then internationally. And every week there is a, a review done of these statistics by all sorts of different people. Well, they used to in when yeah. there was an, when there was a management body in Scientology, and then they would send out orders on how people were supposed to increase them every week. So I got to say though, um, even though this number would be a, a hugely falsified number, I'm still dying to know what the reported number would be, even ballpark, because it does serve some purpose of <clears throat> setting an absolute top limit on okay. like you know there's that book mike that you and i were working with for a while called how to measure anything right and even without having the true uh original source information you can kind of uh bracket in on a number in almost any case I, uh, now in, in the la area where there's like 10 orgs and one public can bounce around to all orgs in a week uh, you're going to have a much greater inflated biz number in an area like LA compared to like Philadelphia, where there's only one org for two hours in each direction. You right. can't, you can juice that number up, but only so much. Right. And that's true for most orgs in the world. I I'm dying to know what even the false reported biz was like, even to the nearest 10,000. Well, when does you anybody were, know when you were at Asho, what was the bodies in the shop at Asho? I don't even remember them keeping bodies in the shop at Asho, although I'm sure they did because it's a Div 6 stat. Um, but I can tell you it wasn't more than – I can just tell you it wasn't more than 300. Right. It just wasn't. It just, it just <laughs> yeah. wasn't. I just know it wasn't. Can I, can I just diverge for a second and comment on what a morbid name for a statistic that is? Bodies yeah. in the <laughs> shop. Bodies in, bodies the, in shop. the shop. <laughs> it should have been seriously. beings in the shop. Wait, they, they couldn't call it beings in the shop because everybody was would it? report the BTs. Right. Yeah. Oh, I've got <laughs> yeah, 7,000 exactly. beings in me today. So uh, we're up. 
Or better uh, yet, do you count the BTs as well, or is it just physical? Well, that's human why bodies? they couldn't say beings; they had to say bodies because it's okay. just the body is there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. BTs can also be <clears throat> bodies, though. Mm. But <laughs> in any event, Aaron, <laughs> I I I get what you're saying. I don't recall. Okay. Like Somebody's if anybody on this somewhere, I would be the one who would know, and I don't recall. It it was it literally was one of those things that was like, oh, it's not even worth paying attention to, because so, it's just such a bullshit number, right? But I I know exactly what you're saying. I did a post about something like that on my blog two days ago about AOSH UK saying that there are eight billion people on Earth. That means every SEOG member is responsible for clearing one million one hundred thousand people, and. You extrapolate right. that back, and they're saying that there are 7,800 7, Sea Org members. Now, we know that's bullshit, but even their inflated number of 7,800 is like it's so minuscule. Yeah. And they say that they have to clear each Sea Org member has to clear one person, a million people. They haven't cleared a hundred thousand people yeah. in 75 years with all the sea org members they so you extrapolate even... it out yeah. and i went okay so if each person if each sea org member's response even if they 10x the number of sea org members tomorrow or a thousand x them tomorrow they're going to clear the planet in three and a half million years yeah <laughs> but they're we're clearing the planet. Planetary clearing is becoming a reality. It is happening now, folks. They can't yes. even clear a zip code, their <laughs> uh -huh. own zip code. How are they going to clear the planet? Yeah. In the vein of that, you can measure anything. I was going to use your blog post, Mike, that you did with the number of Sea Org members they said they had, which we know is higher than is real, but they said essentially 7,000. Right. Well, in the spreadsheet that I did, showing how there's only 35,000 Scientologists in the world, I used 5,000 Sea Org members. I know. So if I'm only that much lower than them on their inflated, it's just more evidence that my est it's we already know the estimate is correct, but their right. numbers <laughs> prove the estimate is correct. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's why I grab those little things and I look at them and go, you know, this says a lot. Yeah. Okay, so here's a good one. Noel Goldberg, several wow. weeks ago, I offered to send money if you would consider wearing a shirt that wasn't black. And Mike said you didn't own any other <laughs> colors. Mike was actually telling the truth at the time. Yeah. Imagine Aaron my went surprise. shopping. <laughs> Imagine my surprise this past week when I saw the assorted colors in all their glory worth every penny. Well, Noel or Noel, I'm not sure which one. I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing Noel. that's Noel. Noel. Oh, it is Noel. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, well, yes, and I've been having a lot of fun with it, and uh, I, I still have my black wardrobe, and it will be making an appearance, but I figured, you know what, it's time to uh, turn a new leaf. That could um, be Noel, by the way. That's my sister's middle name, and there is a woman behind that dog in that picture. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, right, I, think well. it's, I think it's Noel. Okay, Mandy Bishop, this one is for Claire. Honest question for Claire. Did you feel abandoned or betrayed when Mark left you behind when he blew? Absolutely. This Answer is this why very I question feel carefully. that Mark should forgive me for having sent my rings back to him. Okay, this you is can, why. Okay, I let's just fin <laughs> let's just finish this, and we'll, we won't talk about it ever again. Do you want me to forget about the motorcycle being locked up, or do you want me to forget about the mo the rings being sent back? I never deserted you at a 500 oh. acre secure compound. Do you remember when with, I called you? In, do you remember when I called you the, the night? Do you remember when I called you the night before I blew? Yeah, yeah. I do. And, I'm, and you I'm, said, I'm... are you coming home? And I said, I'm going to try. And did you come home? No. You didn't come home. You missed your that. window. You missed your window. <laughs> so, yeah. I had the to leave to your that. The 100%. I was like, what the heck? Why is the theme of my life being left behind in cults? I don't understand. Yeah, no. <laughs> I told I tried to get her, but she didn't come home. So you never told me you were leaving. If I told you that, you might have <laughs> ratted me out, and I might have never escaped. I, yeah, I had fully, to take my chances. I fully acknowledge that. I own that, honey. And but, I met, you know, and I did my I best know, to get you out. Like a 
harsh and here punishment. we are. You could have done so, like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Like I really need to talk to you. Yeah, like, you could have at least like given me a mystery sandwich. Like it's the really best, important that I talk to you. But this is the best part. The reason <laughs> she couldn't come home because she was giving a security check to a girl who had been left there when her husband blew yes. and left her there. She yes. was sex checking that woman whose husband had deserted her and left her, the wife at the at the property, which is yes. ironically the, irony the reason abounds. she didn't come home. And I had and then been I put left. on this task by none other than Shelly Miscavige herself. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It only took about six or seven weeks to, to get this to bubble to the surface. I'm glad we covered this. Yes. Apparently, we still need to talk this through a little more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this 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 never comes up between us but as soon as we get into one of these lives these people stir up all this it, nonsense <laughs> oh. this needs to be relegated to tuesdays yeah, because aaron no. and i do not belong in this i know we'll, we'll I, rename it tense topic tuesdays <laughs> tense topic tuesdays <laughs> there we go oh, thanks God. for nothing mandy bishop no, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Andrew Humphrey wants to know, are you aware of an instance when someone was joining the sea or claiming they'd already signed the billion-year contract in a previous life? If not, is there Scientology doctrine allowing it? Keep up the great work. I mean, no. There's no one's <laughs> ever come. The motto of the Sea Org is we come back. Truth is, they've never no, come no, back. Nobody <laughs> comes back. Here's what happens. Scientologist parents will pressure their young children to join the Sea Org by implanting into their brains that they were past life Sea Org members. And it just becomes this thing. It's like this uh, status symbol of, oh, oh, look, my kid joined the Sea Org. He's uh, 14, 15 years old. <laughs> you know, I guess uh, I guess they really do come back. Like it's this it really is this thing that's kind of enforced on young Scientology kids that they must, of course, uh, be reincarnated Scientologists. Is that your guys' experience? Yeah. Yes. Sure. I think and I think the most egregious example I ever saw of this was um, <clears throat> there was a Scientology kid who said that his parents had interviewed um, this dying Scientologist before they died, and they accepted this person to to move into their uh, unborn baby so they knew who he was in a prior lifetime quote unquote <laughs> spooky that happens all the time it's just yeah. creepy beyond belief Ugh. yeah absolutely okay before we answer another one i have a, a one that i got to put up it's um i told you so wait a Jay. minute we're at 829 oh, here we go Th this is themed i'm warning you guys right now no 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 it's okay. not it's just a starred question that mm -hmm. um, sure. is very important sure. for Mark to get on the screen. Shh. Here we go. It's no L, like the Christmas carol. My first name means Christmas, but oh. I married a Jewish man, so I go through life as Noel Goldberg. Noel, Noel is my Noel. sister's middle name, which also means Christmas. That's, that's oh, so it's... Noel. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Right. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> no L. Back okay. So it sounds go. like Claire was saying it's giveaway time. <laughs> Yes, That's exactly I was saying right. that. Oh, yes. Yes, so who's going first? Aaron's first. Oh, He's in the so top we didn't announce this. To our listening audience, we have four giveaways for tonight, um, which is three bobbleheads, courtesy of a kind person who donated them, who remain wishes to remain anonymous, so done deal. And look at this. We have a baby, baby crochet Zenu. This is not an Zinu. outfit for a Mike Rinder baby bobblehead. This is just a baby Lord Xenu. That's what yeah. uh, that's what we got. It's Look like that Grogu, is, but Xenu. Pretty that is amazing. bigger than I that is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That is <laughs> yeah. so cute. Do you have the uh, do you have the other one there on the desk, Claire? Can you show them side by side so people can oh, see like a sure. scale? Yeah, here we go. Oh my God, that is so funny. <laughs> This we is not some, Marilyn. This is a this is this a crochet is copycat. I'll, I'll see if I can get the link. <laughs> oh, to this it's different. Store. It's a yeah, yeah, it's a totally a different, different person. person. Yeah, We've different got, person. Yeah, we got some mad crocheters up in this. This uh, lady this, was inspired uh, by Marilyn, but yeah, this is a baby one. So. Oh my God, that is so cute. And what about um um who, who crocheted the Jedi Master, uh that, the Jedi Marilyn. Master suit for that that was Marilyn. Mike Bobblehead. Have we shown that on a stream? I don't think we have. No, I don't, I don't have, have one. I, I have the pictures of it. I just don't have them here with me right now. Oh, okay. We'll show, we can show those Absolutely next Monday. Absolutely amazing. 
absolutely amazing with the light so, lightsaber and everything. Yes, and with the Darth Vader. <sighs> yeah. Do you mean that the lights the lightsaber is that what, yeah, that's the lightsaber? No, yeah. the picture shows him fighting Darth Vader. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, guys, we're doing our first giveaway. So this is of a bobblehead, right? Yes. I'm gonna randomly select a name from the live chat. So I need you to start burning up the live chat. You can say whatever you want. It doesn't even have to say anything in particular, just anything at all. Um, and I'm gonna pick a name in five, four, three, two, one. Rachel yes. Brackett Yay. is the first winner of a Mike yes. Rinder bobblehead. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so who does she have to email to? She needs to email me at <clears throat> Claire at blownforgood.com. Sweet. There you go. Yes. Um, and our next giveaway, second giveaway, will occur in 30 minutes from now. Yes. Our third giveaway will occur 60 minutes from now. Yes. And the final one, oh, wait, there's three yeah. or four giveaways. Three. Four. Four. So the last, right before we end off, we'll do one more. Okay, good. There we go. Um, fantastic. Already so much fun. Uh, Destiny Salazar, AA Run, great reporting already on all the ins and outs of the Danny Masterson trial. Keep it up. I will not ask any other details out of respect for Claire. Excellent idea. And thank you so much. Thank you. Um, what is, what is this, Mike? Two LED strips were delivered to Mike today. One more set <laughs> arrives tomorrow. Wow, okay. Mike. Okay. Maria <laughs> sent me those, the light that I use, the blue light for the Emmys, for the okay. Emmy Award that's at home. And she then sent me an email and said, oh, my God, I just found out those lights. The ones that I have shining behind me right now here, Mark, yeah. that you saw, yeah. She said, oh, I found out that they're remote and, and you can't control them from your phone and you, you have to use batteries and you can't plug them in. I had no idea. They're no good. I'm sending you new ones to light up the bookcase behind you. And I said, oh, wow, that's really nice. And she said, but I, they, I didn't have them at, uh, <laughs> they were out of stock on Amazon. So I ordered them from somewhere else. And then I said, well, I'm sorry, Maria, I'm going out of town. I won't get them before I go. And she emailed me and said, okay, well, here's the crazy thing. I tried to cancel the order knowing that it wasn't going to be delivered to you before you got home anyway. And it had already been shipped. And I ordered another one too. So you've got two sets coming. <laughs> so Christy just sent me uh, a message right before this. And she said, these boxes of LED lights arrived. <laughs> Did you order those? I said, no, Maria, one of our viewers. So, Maria, they arrived. Thank you very much. Wow. You're going to be that, up to that's... your eyes and ears and LED strips. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to look like the Rainbow Coalition. Yes. You know, you know what? Somebody messaged me yesterday mm -hmm. and said that they had so kindly and graciously sent me a pair of cracker earrings. <laughs> Cracker earrings? Yes. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Like someone sent Aaron and I the SP this oh, mug. That's right. That is Look at beautiful. This. Look, at, yeah. that Look mug. at that mug. That's pretty cool. It's amazing. Look I haven't that. seen mine yet. It's at home and I'm sitting nice. here in this tacky hotel room, <laughs> as someone just put it. <laughs> it would look, it's going to look much less tacky with some sexy LED lights behind you. Well, yeah, Mark's got the red the red uh, lights from hell in his room. That's right. I just use white looking tacky. You know, the thing to do on YouTube is to use one color on this side of your head and a different color on this side of your head. And apparently that's all the rage. That's what, that's what the kids are doing. I will do that for the next one. Okay. Nice. I can do nice. green and red, green and blue, white and blue. I've got a whole variety. Thanks to Maria. All I right. Nice. So. Denver Stevo, by the way, anyone on watching this video has got to check out Denver Stevo's <laughs> channel. He's uploading these amazing music videos for SPTV. Yes. They're, yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Oh, um, to oh really? Oh, I you texted guys you seen one, them? Mike. They're I incredible. I texted you one the other day. Oh, yeah. I've been kind of busy, Claire. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so Denver Stevo says hello everyone tuning in tonight from Northeast Fair Play Colorado. Is that a real city? South Park. 
Not northeast, though. Just fair yeah. play. We we don't know. He <laughs> does a different city every single oh, time. Oh, I got it. I got it. it. Ken's channel says, if you told me 10 years ago I'd look forward to SPTV more than Monday Night Football, I would have said, you must be in some crazy cult. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, got my signed blown for good book on Saturday. You guys are fast. Nice. nice. Oh, nice. just just a, a programming note here. For anybody that orders a signed one of my books signed, personalized, uh, I won't be back for about 10 days. So you'll have to just be patient. I can't sign them in advance and leave them there for Christy to mail out when the orders come in because you write particular message and i don't have a bunch of books with me here to ship out from here so sorry all right good to know very good to know um i like this one um from thomas fernari aaron is the meanest sp mike is the most thoughtful mark is the funniest and claire is the loveliest that sounds about right <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's nice thank you <laughs> yeah that is nice seeing as i'm definitely the meanest <laughs> <laughs> It depends. We can we can share the crown. Um, <laughs> all right, Calico twenty six. Mike, how long were you in the Apollo before you met Kathy? There was she different back then than well than she is than she is now. Um, she arrived maybe nine months after I did, sometime in nineteen seventy four. Um, and she, yeah, she was very different, just like we all were. I mean, I think everybody sort of devolved through their history in the sea organization um partly due to the amount of time that you spend in the organization and the the changes that you go through being uh and participating in that sort of lifestyle but also because the sea organization changed and the the what was acceptable behavior and what was what was normal behavior and what people did and thought and how they acted changed fairly fairly dr drastically for the worse as time went on awesome good answer um okay uh let let me just take this one uh is it true that scientology's expert witness in the danny masterson trial is claire's stepfather it is true and there's nothing we can say about it but yes but since since it was a yes or no question i i decided to take it um okay lisa robinson says i love my sptv and good luck to claire at the trial absolutely um, I wonder, Claire, would uh, will the world be able to get any sort of advance notice as to when you're going to be testifying, or does it have to be a surprise? Uh, great question. I don't know the answer to that. But I was talking to Mark the other day, and I thought, I'm just keeping a diary. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Aaron, the world will know because the judge typically, in a case, says, okay, uh, prosecutors, who's your first witness? And what's your witness list? And there will, there's always this. And tomorrow, do you think we're going to get to your expert? Tomorrow, are you going to get to uh, your first uh, victim testifying? You know, so there is usually the judge tries to keep the jury and the lawyers and the audience that are there sort of informed about what's coming so that they have some idea. So th that, that is typically how it will be done. Awesome. Awesome. Some advice for Claire here. Right. The copper mustache says, Claire, take over the cave, change the address, and redecorate. <laughs> <laughs> take over the cave. First of all, it's a listening room. It's not a cave. <laughs> well, this is sort of a cave. I'm going to rename it the female retreat. Or C Claire's cave. Spa. Claire's cave. <laughs> Claire's cave. <laughs> Rainbow colored <laughs> lights everywhere in the back. Actually, yeah, right. actually, while you're using it, it would be nice to have another color scheme. That would be really hilarious. Yeah. This is Claire's uh, Claire themed. Claire. She could do cave. blue. Yeah, you could do blue in there, Claire, if you want. All right. Push the little hey. button. There's three buttons on that thing. One turns it off. Push the the opposite of that one, and it'll I, cycle through the colors. I love how he colors. says there's three buttons on that thing. 
<laughs> the I'm thing that has the red lights there are behind like 200 buttons in No, it's <laughs> behind it's behind the sofa. There's some red lights on the floor. You can change the color if you want. Okie dokie. Oh. I'll take a look. Thanks for the hot tip. Mm -hmm. I just realized we're both wearing the same shade of SP blue. Yeah. There you go. I'm wearing I'm wearing off policy green. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was I was waiting for Mike to jump in, but now it's okay. I didn't have anything to say. I'm wearing like Sea Org Naval Blue. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay. He's Peggy wearing Wolf. overboard blue. <laughs> overboard blue. <laughs> not I so never, naval. Yeah. No, he's wearing not so naval blue. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Peggy Wolf says, I never get to see you guys live. Aaron, seriously uh, love the new look. Um, it's just one of the many new looks. Uh, again, it's part of the SP Spring Collection. And um, you can get yours at Amazon.com, where I get my shirts. <laughs> or the Sears Young Men's Catalog. <laughs> XSO, big and tall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Denver Steve has got another good one here. If I were in the Sea Org riding a motorcycle around the Int base, I crashed and broke my leg. How is the hospital bill paid? Who pays it? Do I have insurance? Does Davy cut a check? Go ahead, Claire. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> the medical officer will promptly arrive at your bedside in the hospital and have you fill out a form that states that you work 40 hours a week and that this accident happened during those 40 hours a week so that the bill can be paid with workers' compensation. That is how it was usually done. Workers' comp. No matter when yep. you got, had an accident, it happened during the day. Even if it happened in the middle of the night, it happened Yeah, like take the day. my accident, which I was unsubtly referencing. It happened um, around noon on a Saturday. And I was working. And I had far exceeded 40 hours of a 40-hour work week at that point. So, yeah incredible it's it's a weird um kind of um pendulum swing between forcing something to be covered by workman's comp uh in many cases i i, I thought the, in philly at least the org would bend over backwards to prevent anything from being charged to workman's comp because they couldn't afford having the rates increased on them so that's where you get people just being forced to go to the free clinic in the er and like hell no we're not submitting a claim but perhaps it's different if you're at the int base uh that's a different set of rules yeah, yeah we also it had is different people losing fingers and breaking legs and crashing motorcycles. Like he's saying something that happened many, many times. She Claire did. broke yes. her leg riding a motorcycle at so the device. And so yes. did Mike. Uh, and which by the way, I was not even allowed to tell my, any of my family that I'd broken my leg until two years later. Oh my God. Oh, I didn't even know my leg was broken until a year later. Oh my gosh. I flew the next week to do an event at the Fort Harrison for the 75th the that anniversary happened. of the Fort Harrison. And I had, I had skinned the back of my hand and arm and I was on crutches, even though I'd gone to the emergency room at the Hammett hospital, they hadn't noticed that I actually had fractured my leg. <sighs> I went, I did this event and in order to get on stage, I had makeup all over my hands so that you couldn't see that they were all bloody. And I had to practice for like 30 minutes beforehand to get from the edge of the curtain to the podium at the Fort Harrison uh, Auditorium yeah. without anybody noticing that I was limping. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> and then deliver the speech and then scuttle back in, in, into the back. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, okay, here's an interesting one. Shana W. says, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, but work in uh, public aid. Would Scientologists give me the stink eye for having the degree? You guys rock. Yes. 100%. Definitely. Yes. You wasted your time. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. least when it comes to Scientology. But hey congratulations and yeah. well done <laughs> and honestly having a job where you work uh have anything to do with public aid or social services would get you a stink eye as well yes yeah. true true yeah that is true yeah that's a double whammy good point so, aaron yeah yes <laughs> you're just helping all those out exchange db crims yeah you know you know what's really crazy my uncle was a very well-known pediatrician in london and one time i was talking to him 
and telling him actually about that accident that, that we were just talking about where I broke my leg. And I was explaining how I was rushed to the ER and they asked me who who did this to me? Like who put this splint on my leg? Cause it resulted in me almost losing my foot. And I told him, I just looked at them and I said, I don't know because I couldn't say anything bad and I was in shock. So I didn't know, I couldn't think of anything better. And my uncle literally started crying and he was like, that's what we know to be a sign of trauma and abuse is when the answer is, I don't know. It's crazy. That's cra yeah. It is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, here's a throwback answer. Uh, Cat Maggie says flap comes from an old Navy phrase, just mm. like loose cannons are deadly on a boat in a storm. If the sails flap, you're potentially toast. Oh, there you go. Toast is another Scientology uh, Sea Org <laughs> term. And, and usually it's it's used your toast or you're going to you if you don't get this done when I by the time I come back, your toast. That is a people toast each or you say did you toast him oh yeah i toasted them did you give him an sra a severe oh. reality adjustment <laughs> here's another phrase that's used so much in scientology i thought it was a scientology phrase and that's he, he's to, uh, off the rails oh he's totally off the rails oh you're oh, off yeah. the rails that's off the rails um and it just means out ethics now in the real world it means something a little different in, in scientology it means out ethics unethical out of, um out of control, but not, no, I don't know. Would they say this whole project is off the rails or do they just say people are off the rails? No, you can no, say project pro is off projects the rails. off the rails. Yeah. Okay. But, but yeah, that's an interesting one. I have a question. What about other fish to fry? That's not a Scientology phrase. Okay. It isn't. No. I thought no. it was. So did I. It's just Hubbard used it. And so it's such a common phrase in Scientology. <clears throat> well, here, um, well, let me, uh, Look it up right here. Other fish to fry, meaning, uh, yeah, have other more important things to attend to. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. This is somebody, I love toast without Vegemite. And then Leanne <laughs> because... says, I love toast with Vegemite. No, she said, no. I just had toast with Vegemite. I just with toast had toast with Vegemite. Vegemite. Congratulations, oh, Leanne. Leanne. I, I wish love I was toast with without Vegemite. Ken, I love toast without Vegemite as well. Thank you. Now uh, I'm having power. memories. This is going to make Mike make a face. I personally like, like Marmite. Marmite. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Vegemite one, Marmite two. There we go. Marmite yeah. tastes <laughs> the way. Th no, Vegemite tastes the way that American chocolate tastes when you've grown up in England and have been eating proper chocolate. What, it tastes oh, amazing? Oh. No, oh, American oh. chocolate tastes like fake chocolate. Really? Yes. Amer oh, American God. chocolate is not very good. It's it, there, compared no to English chocolate. That. This is true. Or Swiss or Belgian or any Frank sure. basically anywhere else. Um, Sorry. Yeah, that was a fun uh, culinary diversion. <laughs> <laughs> Now we have super chats about what kind of toast people like. <laughs> I like toast with butter and cinnamon sugar. Thank you, Heather B. We appreciate it. Nice. We'll give it a try. <laughs> All right. Here's, uh, here's an interesting one. Betty Taylor says, I watched a video of Jeffrey Augustine interviewing Bill Franks. Um, for those watching, Bill Franks uh, used to be the executive director international um, uh, before L. Ron Hubbard died, right? Yeah, but Jeff has interviewed Bill Franks? Before he died, he did interview him. Wow. Yeah. wow. Interesting. I did not know that. Um, uh, Bill Franks said that L. Ron Hubbard told David Miscavige and him that overts and withholds are BS. I only use that to control them. Also, I'm only here for the money. Horrible. Okay, I've got to jump in here. That's not what was said. <laughs> what was said was L. Ron Hubbard uh, said out loud what I think all Scientologists already do know, if we're being fair, you guys let me know if you agree, that overts and withholds aren't the only reason that people blow. They can also blow from ARC breaks. You can blow from being treated so horribly. I don't think any Scientologist is actually wondering about this. I mean, do you, would you guys agree that when you were in, it's not like, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Did you? Did you think literally if you leave, it could never be because you were so mistreated or upset? No, it's because you have overts. If you yeah. leave, it's because you have overts. That's it. That I mean, that's not entirely what I believed, Aaron. 
because there is Hubbard writings about that, like where he says, of course, you can treat someone so badly. It's in the blow offs, HCOB, in fact. Yeah. Exactly. You, of course, you can treat someone so bad. The assumption, though, is that could never be Scientology. Yes. That Scientology can never treat anybody badly. So, therefore, the only explanation is over some withholds. That's yeah. right. And that's interesting because that, that <laughs> way of thinking that that could never happen in Scientology, even though the mechanism could work that way. Just like in Scientology, if you're getting a PTS handling and you name a staff member, you're automatically false PTS. Right. Yes. Right. That's exactly because that, right. Because a staff no member staff could never member. be a real. Yeah. Exactly. I sorry. I didn't want to cut you off there. No. Um, yeah, That's exactly. Good. Yeah. So um, super interesting. I remember Jeff mentioning this to me. Uh, Bill Franks, this is just a, 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 a one of the downfalls of this generational divide in the Scientology experience is if I had been alive during that time, Bill Franks would probably be a really big deal to me. And yet to me, E. Dient is Guillaume Lasserve and anyone who came before him is is irrelevant in 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 the mind of uh, that's my Scientology experience. I don't even know. <laughs> Life before Guillaume Lasserve is like, what? What's that? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But Bill but Franks, Bill if Franks I'm not a big deal, he I was mean, a Bill, big Bill deal. Franks is the one who was personally selected by L. Ron Hubbard to be executive director, internet or, or not. No, uh, oh, Bill okay. Franks was selected by Liz Ingba. Liz Ingba was sent on a mission by L. Ron Hubbard to find the, ex to, first of all, write the policy letter on the executive director international, which she spent like three years doing, and then to select an executive director international. I like how Mike just threw some shade at some Sea Org exec for like 30 years ago. It took her three years to write the thing. Well, it, trying to write, she was supposed to, Hubbard claimed that he had written up his hat as executive director international and nobody could ever find this thing. <laughs> and this was like a big deal because Hubbard said he did it. He said, I wrote up my hat as executive director international when I left St. Hill. And he didn't. It was bullshit. So Liz Ingba was sent on this mission to find the hat write-up of L. Ron Hubbard as executive director international. Because he when said he wrote it. Yeah. So, so it when, must exist. <laughs> so then she had to go and find every little thing that he had ever said about the subject of being the executive director international or the ED at St. Hill or running St. Hill or whatever, cull all of the information out of those things and try and turn it into one policy letter to submit to Hubbard and say, sir, here is your hat write up. And <laughs> you imagine that task and then trying to get oh, it approved. Gosh. And then she selected, I, I'm pretty sure it was Liz that selected I mean, Janice may be on here listening to us. She often is. And she knows everything about everything that ever happened in the Sea Org. But I think that Liz was the one who selected Kerry. I mean, uh, Bill yeah. Franks. But wow. then Bill Franks, very shortly after he became the executive director international, started siding with Mary Sue Hubbard and then the mission holders. <laughs> and then so suddenly Bill Franks became... Oh my God, Bill Franks is complete shit. And he got gone. He was yanked faster than, you know, like a, a one night play on Broadway. He was just <laughs> like, whoa, he's gone. And suddenly, Kerry Gleason, who was the COFB, is made the, the ED int. And then the story gets even more bizarre because then Kerry Gleason gets sent up to the int. To gold to be ed int and any broker who was with l run hubbard sends me a message i was in cmocw and says i am appointing you the ed int programs ops i was the co cmocw you're to report to int and you report only to me and you are to watch kerry gleason 24 7 and report to me everything that he does and so i sit up there i literally sit and watch kerry gleason and wow. send reports to annie and then Annie says okay 
he's not to be the EDN. You need to find a new EDN. I found Guillaume. Oh, wow. And I brought Guillaume to Int to make ED Int. And then I was his ED Int programs ops being run by Annie Broca to install Guillaume on post as the executive director international of Scientology. Wow. wow there, there you, you go, go, folks. Is that in your book, Mike? <laughs> yeah, sort of a bit, I think. Maybe huh. I like there's a lot of things that I just didn't have room and you know yeah no I know that it's not that significant in the in the overall scheme of things but yeah little wow. story super cool um, Destiny Salazar says it never occurred to me that it might be hard to know if a saying comes from Scientology terminology or is a common colloquialism when growing up in Scientology it shows how isolated you were it's I'll, I'll, absolutely right yeah i think you don't know. one of the one of the one of the words or phrases that most scientologists <clears throat> actually don't know is a scientology word is outpoint yes yes I, th I think you're right aaron i mean i know that because that's clearly is what is in the data series and hubbard makes a big point about this is a new form of thought and a new way of thinking and a new way of reasoning and etc cetera, etc cetera. and he even says people would call these errors or mistakes we've coined i think he says we've coined a new term out point <clears throat> it's out point and plus point and it's funny because right. scientologists almost never use the word plus point right they only use the word out point that's true <laughs> because, i never true. thought about that because they don't say this is a plus point evaluations are looking for out points yeah, yeah. that's true there, another word that I always thought was a Scientology word that I don't think stems from Scientology is interbulate. Mm, interbulate. And theta, theta definitely is oh, interbulated, interbulated theta. But the word interbulate is an actual word out in the real world. I thought it, it was, is. Yes, it is. It is, but I do think the meaning in Scientology is unique to Scientology, if I'm not mistaken. Though, though, if you look at the definition in the real world, it mirrors no, the you're concept. No, you're right. You're right, because interbulated really mean, is short for interbulated theta. And theta. No, 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 I know. But when someone says, I'm interbulated, what that really oh, right. means is my theta is interbulated. Yes, And that's, that's right. what gives it the unique meaning. Yes. But the word interbulated actually is probably the normal meaning of interbulated. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I always thought that was a Scientology term, so there you go. Yeah. Like, I know. Uh, what do I know? I grew up in, in like, a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Mike really did grow up in a cult. In, like, liquid <laughs> dynamics or whatever whatever the science is, uh, the, the motion of liquids and, gas, and gases, um, interbulation is definitely something that comes into play of uh, a flow being interbulated. Like, yeah. you know, the swirly. Oh, shit. How do you know that? Well, I mean, I know. I pick up a thing or two here and there. You know, <laughs> last night on the chat that was it last night or would we did a video when do we do a video I'm all the days run together for me oh now. I don't we know. did a video yesterday during the day but um somebody asked about the sea orc pay and how it was 50 bucks if you um had 50 dollars in 1990 of uh, the buying power of that it would take a hundred and like 18 dollars today with inflation so sea orc pay should be about 120 bucks somebody did the math <laughs> But, uh, oops, sorry, that was me. I meant to star it, sorry. How about Dev T, <laughs> developed traffic? Well, that's definitely that's a Scientology definitely word. Scientology. 100%. Okay, we're coming up to 9 o'clock. Okay, you're... Oh, that's, yeah. that's I'm, you, I'm the picker this time. Oh, Mike, sorry. Yes. So, <laughs> All right, burn up that live stream. Time. Burn yeah, it up. If you, if you guys want something, if you want, if you want a bobble, is it bobbles we're giving away? Yeah. Yes. If you want a bobblehead, get in those comments and let let us know. Mike's okay. going to pick one. Okay. This I a... am. Oh, shit. They go. Past... I go. Oh, yeah, that one. And then, then it's gone. Uh -oh. Well, you're just supposed to click, not pick okay, and click. Okay. 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 Here yeah. I go. Uh... You got to do a countdown at least. Oh, you didn't count down. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. No, 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 no. He no, gets it's it. done. David. <laughs> David. David Aaron, Aaron Guerin. Guerin. David Aaron Guerin. B. V. <laughs> B. V. <laughs> okay, but David. Uh, Claire will write down. Did you write it down, Claire? I did. 
Okay, he, you got to email her. Please email me because I have no way to email you. There okay. you go. Exciting. There we go. Another winner. Everyone's a winner here, Everyone. but some people win a, win a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't get this on Scientology TV. Yeah, Mug they don't give maker. you anything. Yeah, they didn't and, even give you new programming. And how amazing it is it that people just order and say, "This is for the next live. Give them away." Yeah, pretty it's awesome. Pretty cool. People are uh, buying these for the winners. By the way, peeps, viewers have bought these for other viewers. Here's a good well, one. No, the crazy part is that the person that donated these three was yeah. picked as a winner a pre previous time. Oh, wow. That's oh, cool. this is the pay it forward Starbucks yes. routine. That's right. Yes, exactly. That's kind of cool. Let's yeah. read this TB mud make, mug maker here, Tim, Tim Bridwell. Yeah, that's him. He's the guy who made yes. the, the mug. Thank yep. you, yes. Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I'm very I'll much get, looking forward to mine. I'll get mine when I get home. <laughs> this, is, this is a great one. I just have to show it. <laughs> Pick me or I ask a Marty question. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. That's what I was trying to do. I knew it was, oh, Mike, when well, you said this you is the one I want. Oh. I think Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon, you're getting one, too. Silver Spoon. You know yeah. what? To be honest, <laughs> I, we had five giveaways. But, <gasps> but, so, yeah. but so I wanted to give this thing away. So we do have Silver Spoon. You're a winner. Email me. There you yeah, go. We there just you did go. a bonus. There you go. There you oh, go. I, thank it, you, it's Mark. just the comedy. I needed it. I know. So. I, I like that's the one I said. Oh, there's oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Silver Spoon. Email Claire. Yes. Oh, guys, check this out. Mark Fisher. Hi to SPTV from Las Vegas. So nice. Mark and Mark Fisher and Janice today launched their SPTV YouTube channel. Oh, yes. awesome. We got to put and, a link in the descriptions. Um, if Goldie has the link, um, she can put it in live chat. We'll put it in the video description. But here, the name of the channel as of right now, I believe, is Our Scientology Stories. Yes. Peeling the Onion. Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. There you go. And, and Janice told me that they were going to focus on the sort of historical side of the sea off. Okay. I, I don't know if that's what's going to happen, but that's what she mentioned to me last week or something. So I okay. that's great. That's great. Awesome. Um, I have I suggested so that they figure out how to shorten the name to either just our Scientology stories or Scientology peeling the onion <laughs> in order to get traction on, on YouTube. Um, but for now, it is our Scientology stories dash peeling the onion. And um, anyway, you're going to be seeing a lot of good stuff from them. Cool. So wanted to get that up there. Uh, okay, here's a funny one. Uh, Kakatunga I Road. Hold on. Kakatogi <laughs> Road. Kakatogi Road. <laughs> Is that a real road? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I drive down it all the time. <laughs> all right. Let's this not is, kid ourselves. <laughs> Frank Stallone's Road to Freedom was a total banger. Could anyone <laughs> shed some light on Frank's involvement in Scientology? Trouble, double, stubble, stubble, get it your is, shaver it is actually, on my face. It is actually the only Scientology music I thought was good. That Road to Freedom? Well, I mean, look, when I say good, I don't mean... It's in like the top 40 billboard, you know, hits of the world. I'm saying I thought it was actually quality, well-produced music. The other stuff is just practically satire. I mean, so I, there's a YouTube channel that actually broke down all of Scientology's musical library. Um, it, it, it's a professional music guy who has a, a high quality, big channel, and he broke it all down. And it's hilarious. The Edgar Winter stuff, the space jazz is like almost a comedy. You'd think it was Saturday Night Live. It's so bad. Okay. Yeah. Um. The 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 Dougie Fresh stuff, the joy of creating, is just so horrible. The Chili B, the the Scientology hip hop is so bad. You're like, how did this get done? But I thought the Road to Freedom album was at least like quality musicians. I, I mean, quality vocals at least. Even if the maybe the 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 maybe the um the the lyrics are are cheesy as hell. I just I'm just saying. I, I thought it was the only stuff that I thought was actually decent. Okay. Oh, come on. What about We Stand Tall, man? Uh, no, I did like Jeff Pomerantz. He's, those were bangers as well. <laughs> it's David Pomerantz. What did I say? 
Jeff Pomerantz. Jeff, Jeff Pomerantz oh, is the Jeff. announcer VO guy. David Pomerantz is the singer guy. Not How related. crazy is it that they're not even related? I know. It's it's weird. It's like Marty Rathbun, and there was a guy at the Imp Base who was in the kitchen. Aaron Rathbun. And Ronnie. his name was Ronnie Rathbun. And Ronnie. For, yeah, for the whole there. entire time I was there, I just assumed they were brothers. And I even said to somebody, oh, yeah, his brother was there. And he goes, somebody's like, that wasn't his brother. I was like, they have the same name, Rathbun? That's the <laughs> weirdest last name, and two people at it. So, yep. Mike, was Frank Stallone ever actually a Scientologist? No. He let his his he let himself be used for that musical album, and he wasn't even a freaking Scientologist. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why. I, I think know he what was the... Scientology adjacent. Somebody yes. knew him. Someone, and... someone who was involved in that thing. I mean, Leif Garrett was on it too. But Leif like, Garrett was on was... the cover of Celebrity. I know, but he wasn't ever really a Scientologist. I think he did the Purif. Yeah. That's so did enough. Brad Pitt. Yeah, that's enough. You know, the I got to tell the story. I never get to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> One time. Settle in, folks. Are you ready for this, Aaron? <laughs> yeah. If, One you, time. If, if you need a bathroom break, now's the time. <laughs> One time at CC, at the Celebrity Center, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers was in the parking lot of CC with a baseball bat destroying a Mercedes Benz in the C Celebrity Center parking lot. He was really? At a, we had a baseball bat, and he was beating up a Mercedes Benz. Belonging to? Him, while he was doing his Purif. <laughs> Lee <laughs> did the Purif? Yep, at CC. <clears throat> But after he beat up the Mercedes, I think there were complications with keeping him on the Purif or him finishing the Purif or something. There was definitely, um, there was definitely. That was not a good indicator. Yeah, there was definitely problems with him <laughs> being there, beating up cars on Purif breaks. He and, was a um, flat ball bearing. Anyway, yeah. You have, to, ima you have to imagine how he got tricked into doing that at the celebrity center and what he thought he was doing it for. Like, um, what there's no way flea was trying to join Scientology, right? Someone had to trick him, trick him into doing this. And somehow ironically, it's cheaper to do the purification rundown at an actual Scientology org than it is to go to say a Narconon. It's like 15 times cheaper. Wow. It's like, I think it's like $5,000 to do the Purif. Yeah. And if you go to Narconon, it's like $40,000 yep. or yeah. even more. Is it five thousand now for the PRF? It used to be twenty five hundred. Well, yeah, I thought it Narc was five thousand. Yeah, Narconon starts at like thirty k. By the yeah. way, did you guys? Uh, I told a story of Mike. Uh, Mike Tyson accidentally went to a Narconon without knowing what he was going for. And I was just gonna say the exact same thing. It was just like Mike Tyson ended up somewhere to do a drug rehab, and because they don't tell you it's Scientology until you're there, that you never hear the word Scientology until you get there and they do that with other things as well they have like um, professional courses or uh, acting yeah. classes or <clears throat> how to stress. make it in hollywood yeah but they do that all over scientology they say oh come in uh what is it mental therapy they were offering that sign and somebody called and yeah. they said oh i'll be there at eight and they did the whole thing they never once mentioned the word scientology and then when the person goes to go there like what's the name of the building oh you'll see when you get here we don't have to go through it you know yeah totally um mike this one's for you ash sure wants to know how do i order a signed copy of your book for a mother's day gift you just go to my blog and click on the left hand side of my blog mikerindasblog.org and it will allow you to write the message that you want and pay for the book and once I get home, I will write the message and ship it off to you. Fantastic. Marilyn Honig has a question that I've always wondered about as well. If there's no supreme being, who banished Xenu to the inside of a mountain and who is enforcing his stay there, I think we should break him out. Okay. That well, is first, an excellent question. Yeah. Can I answer this one? Because I'm the one who broke him out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they put him in an electronic, uh, a cave with electronic gates. Um, but the problem is, and it was done by loyal soldiers of the officers, uh, loyal officers, loyal officers of the, um, what were they called? The loyal what? officers. The Galactic <laughs> know, but, Confederacy. Yeah. From the Galactic Confederacy. Oh. Um, the loyal officers imprison him, 
But the problem is they use these electronic gates, but they were powered by Rayovac batteries, those lantern <laughs> batteries that you used to get when you were a kid. And those things die. They're nickel cadmium. They're don't, they don't last that long. And so when those died, he just walked out and I was there. He's been thawing out in my backyard for a few years. When he wakes up, it's going to be showdown. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's who put him there was the loyal officers to answer your question, Marilyn. Um, please don't crochet uh, any loyal officer outfits because they were inconsequential in the overall scheme of things. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, this is a funny one. Uh, Destiny Salazar, do you think Osa has a super chat budget? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they don't. But they, oh, somebody told me today. Um, when they were watching my video from yesterday, they got a, um, a it was a I think it was either a Tom Cruise ad or a Grant Cardone ad, or both actually. So we're getting Grant Cardone's now advertising on YouTube, and uh, he's paying us now too. So Scientology, Tom Cruise, and now Grant Cardone. Thank you. We appreciate it. Hopefully Excellent. you end up in jail soon, but otherwise, until then, you can keep paying for us to do. Well, this. I've been dying to do this video, but I've had so much uh, other things to discuss. Uh, Gary Cardone is being sued by the Federal Trade Commission right now. No. So here, uh, G Gary is a company called Chargeback 911. And now, um, so Mike and I know some people whose business models are dependent upon getting people to sign up for free trials with credit, using their credit cards and stuff, and then making it absolutely impossible to cancel and you're getting recharged over and over again. And the business models that are based on this, they have merchant accounts that regularly get shut down because when your merchant account gets a certain percentage of chargebacks, it's just a huge glaring red flag of fraud. So they just instantly close down your merchant account. Okay. Grant Cardone's company, Chargeback 911, is a company designed to help companies that have this fraudulent business model keep their merchant accounts open longer <laughs> by minimizing the amount of chargeback reports or by running thousands of BS charges through the merchant account so that the percentage of chargebacks looks um, less. What? So now you have to wonder, hmm, I wonder what business Car uh, Gary Cardone's business might have been created to help. <laughs> Cardone that Enterprises is... couldn't possibly be one of them. <laughs> that is so crazy. Yes, and the FTC in his press release even pointed out that at least three of, of Chargeback 911's clients have also been sued by the FTC. And I just got to find someone who can help me figure out how to uh, figure out which company. There's no way, there's no way Gary's company doesn't exist to help Cardone's company um, commit this type of fraud. Because yep. you'll notice Cardone Enterprises, you'll notice, they're not selective about who they market to. They want anyone and everyone. They're hoovering up anyone they can into their sales funnel because all they want is the most number of people in the sales funnel as possible because that's how these freaking scams work. They only need a certain percentage of them of these chargebacks to go to, of these charges to go through month after month. And, uh, you know, that's how these companies make money. And, and the company that, that there's one particular guy that I'm not naming that Mike and I know who makes an unbelievable amount of money in this fraudulent business and has been doing it for decades. I, I mean, they print, they print money. The entire thing's based on fraud. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, once I figure out how to do a video about that, um, connecting the dots between Grant and Gary, uh, that's what's going to happen. Um, by the way, speaking of which, if I can find this comment, if I can find this comment. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll find it eventually. Uh, Jennifer Bissonette. Aaron, I've been watching you all day. I hope I accident didn't accidentally write you into my term paper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at how so many amazing. viewers. Aaron, look at the viewers. Three, 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 three is what it wow. says. Nice. Ding. So what was the record? Um, it was somewhere between 32 and 34. Do you guys remember? I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Next one. Marsha. I'm sorry. Maria Marcel. When you're in the sea or your passport is initially taken away, do you get it back when you are sent overseas for training or ever, or does someone hold it for you the whole time? Well, you get it back if you have to travel internationally. Yeah. But then they collect it back from you on right. your return. Yeah, but what you do, though, I figured this out early on. If you're going to go on a trip again, 
or you've been going on a bunch of different trips, you can just say you turned it in and then they just say, oh, okay, great. And then you just keep it. So whenever somebody asks, you say, oh, I turned it in. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, Sarah Wynn <clears throat> says, read Mark's book on Amazon Unlimited. There you he, go. What is that? What is that? It's like when you, it's like a subscription, I think, and you just oh. read whatever you want. You don't pay for, you can just get whatever you want. And you don't have oh, to pay okay. for it. Here's a little something to cover reading it for free. It was great. Nothing but love for my four favorite SPTV peeps. Up next, Mike's book. Thanks for what you do. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate Wonderful. it. I wonder if that's like YouTube premium where, you know, you, you pay extra money to not see ads, but YouTube still keeps track of which videos that you watch and they still pay the creators a little bit of money when you watch their videos. Yeah, I, I know I have that on Audible because a lot of people just subscribe to Audible so they can listen to whatever they want. And the same thing mm. with Kindle. And Kindle and Audible both give you a certain amount of revenue from the people that are just reading it for free sometimes. Very it's cool. Not, it's a por it's smaller portion, but it's a good to get you know the book out. <clears throat> yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, I found it. Lisa Lee. Aaron, I loved Cleared Hot Podcasts. Okay, so let's explain that. There is a podcast um, by Andy Stumpf. Uh, who is a former member of SEAL Team 6. Um, I think he was on the POW rescue mission for, what was her name, Jessica? Uh, in, in the Iraq War. Um, anyway, he was on the only uh, POW rescue mission since World War II. He has a podcast called Cleared Hot. And that's what I had flown to uh, Montana to film with him. And uh, he published it this morning. Uh, showing your emotions and vulnerability is real and endearing. Okay, so... Uh, okay. Okay. I hope it doesn't get easier when you talk about it. Truth is truth. Oh, hi, hubba hubba, Mike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show this comment for a couple reasons. One, um, uh, besides the hubba hubba, Mike, what? <laughs> a Andy, um, Andy has said he, he's, he's gone deep down the Scientology rabbit hole. He'd do a hundred podcasts on Scientology if he could, and he wants to interview all of you. So Mike, yeah, he, wrote to, he wrote to me today, Aaron. Go, I gave nice. him your email address. I gave him your direct yeah. email address. Um, nice. And also, <clears throat> we do a whole segment of the interview on Grant Cardone. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I looked at it. It's long, right? It's three full hours. Wow. Did wow. he chop it up wow. or did he just nope. just just put it the way you guys did it? Yep. I love and, that. And and he only does them in live in Montana? Yep. Face to face. Wow. Oh, I, well, I've always wanted to go to Montana. Nice. There you yeah. go. I'm going to go to there the Yellowstone Ranch. Somebody so, yeah, said, guys. Yeah, somebody said, Aaron, it was Jessica Lynch. Jessica Lynch. Yeah, he was on the mission and rescued Jessica Lynch. And, guys, get this. He fucking interviews Jessica Lynch on his podcast as well. Wow. wow. That's pretty yeah. powerful. That's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Um, yeah, guys, so check it out. Um, Cleared Hot, Andy Stumpf, S-T-U-M-P-F, fantastic podcast, fantastic channel. Um, and, and, you know, uh, our podcasts or our channels are mostly YouTube-based, or, I mean, at least my stuff is, Mike's is. I know, I know Mark and Claire have, have some, <clears throat> they figured out how to put it into regular podcast world. Um, Andy Stumpf's podcast is many, many times bigger in the podcast world than it is in yeah. the YouTube world. Yeah, he has um, millions and millions of uh, podcast followers or subscribers yeah. or whatever you call it. Yeah, and just a really, really great guy. Okay, so Travis Bowman says, SPTV tattoos, don't think about it, just do it. <laughs> That's so good. I don't know. I don't think I could handle it. Claire, how, how are you with, like, needle pain? I am very good with pain. I have really? I through a lot of pain. Three yeah, children, I can't, I can't. multiple yeah. broken bones, yeah, all versions of pain. Yeah, thousands of it. hours of TRs. <laughs> <laughs> if, years of Scientology. <laughs> Thirty years in a cult. I'd say I'm good with, good with miserable pain and suffering. I can tolerate it. <laughs> all right. Well, if Claire gets an SPTV tattoo, I will uh, vaguely consider it. She's okay. not um, getting that. You want, you want me to do a live, Aaron? This is me getting a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um oh all right let's God. see mystic wolf i'm wondering how many sptv supporters will be in la starting next week i'm thinking tailgates and signs you guys are amazing that you know i was crazy. reminded today the courtroom literally holds 30 people i can't believe this room's so small i don't know how i'm gonna last sitting in this room all day um but 
30 people. That is so that is so small. Yeah. And when, and the place was still ne- almost never filled up during the first trial. When mm. I did you go on the first time, Aaron? Did you ever go? No. When I went, it was um, there was like room for more people. It wasn't even full. Yeah. So there you go. I don't know how many um, supporters will be there, but I really do hope we can fill out the court courtroom when the Jane Doe's are testifying. And of course, when when Claire's testifying, I don't know, would that make it harder? Like, I, I, I don't know. I try to put myself in their shoes. Like if I was testifying, would I be more comfortable or less comfortable if I saw a lot of familiar faces in the audience? I'm not sure. Nobody wants to be talking about this stuff. Like, it's yeah. not like, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's it's a kind of a I don't know. It's just awkward. The whole thing is awkward, Aaron. Yeah. When they when they're talking about stuff that you shouldn't be talking about there, it's definitely awkward. Yeah. Totally. I'll send okay. you I'll, I'll give you a box of saltines and you can give them <laughs> to fans. So if any of my fans show up, you can give them some crackers. <laughs> can you can you pre-lick them? What? Can um, you pre-lick? Can you pre-lick them? No. I you can you, you can be the designated liquor, Alan. Yeah. Alan. All right. That would be pretty yeah. funny. Have like those giveaway, you know, like uh, like they hand out on the airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cracker yeah. packets promoting SPTV. <laughs> just so you know, I've already researched this. You can buy them in just a little two cracker package, like right. they give you when you get soup at the at the store or at the uh, supermarket or something like that. Of course, you can you've get already those branded. It. <laughs> you can get those branded any which way you want. We could actually do this, no problem. It's super easy. Oh yeah, gosh. that's amazing. Okay, here's an interesting question. Angela Bernhardt, friend of Hogue. Uh, do Scientology members actually take real classes on statistics like one would in college, or is it statistics according to how LRH instructed? Yep. Uh, strictly L. Ron Hubbard style. Absolutely. Yeah. And his style is 1950s <clears throat> Cold War era nonsense. And it is not... If you ran your business using these things, you will your business will not do well. It's not a good system to apply to a business. Um, I wouldn't do it if I were you. Do the opposite. You'll do much better. Yeah, the only thing it's better than is nothing. <laughs> well, that's not true either, Aaron. That's well, not true. I'm, well, but I mean, honestly, these could these Scientology business consulting groups make a ton of money teaching this very basic system to people whose only alternative is nothing. That's true. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You're right. Just keeping track of, well, also just yeah. keeping track of stuff administratively um, is better than what some of these guys are doing, which is, you're right, nothing. So anyway, yeah, they do make a lot of money telling people to count <coughs> up the number of dollars they made last month and try to make more dollars this month. All right, here's a fun one. Crystal says, I wasn't going to do this, but I admire the work y'all are doing so much. It'd be awesome to get a happy birthday from such a great group of warriors. Keep fighting. Tomorrow, I'll be 42. Happy Yay. birthday, happy Crystal. Happy birthday, Crystal. Happy birthday, Crystal. I hope you have a great Crystal. day. Hopefully, you have a great day. Make it amazing. <laughs> Denver, Steve-O, how long was Claire in the hole after Mark left? How'd you get out in less than three weeks? Stay tuned for my book. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it was three weeks. It is in and... my book. The end of my book has the exact story of how I got Claire out. <laughs> how we, how, how we, did I do on on the eye roll, Mike? How we, <laughs> how we worked as a team for her to escape. How I creatively had to figure out how to get Mark a message so he would listen and call me. Was this Undercover. before or after the wedding rings were returned? <laughs> oh, the wedding rings happened no, years uh, before that. The wedding oh. rings was years before. Oh, yeah. okay. I've got the timeline on the whole thing mixed up. Yeah, the, me- the, By the wedding way, rings time- was in 2000. Yeah. Timeline is another one. Is timeline? that a Scientology thing? Oh, you've got no. your timeline. There's or time time track. Is time track a Scientology is Scientology, yes. definitely. Okay, the timeline, okay. I think that's pretty generally... Yeah, I think it is. Yes. Uh, Denver Steve-O with another one here. Um, why does Mike's room look normal hotel tacky, but Mark looks like he's sitting in the bowels of hell? <laughs> because I am. <laughs> my room uh, is uh, my room is in the basement of the hotel. It's really only because next to the furnace. Mike, well, it's really just because Mike doesn't have the LED lights on. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. He can do it if he wants. See? Oh, oh you, you've got it right there. 
Yeah, he's got it. He can do whatever he wants. Hit us, hit guess, us with I some blue. Hit Let's us with some blue. I can. Oh, look at that. Green. Wow. <laughs> That's actually, that actually, it actually kind of um, matches your shirt a little bit there. You like the blue? Should I stick I kinda, with the blue? Kind of. We, we, <laughs> we, we should ask uh, the person that gave them to me what her view is. Maria. What would she like? Maria. Yes. There you go. <gasps> uh oh. We got, guys, check this out. Bella Lotta says, please use this to give someone a bobblehead tonight. Wow. Wow. We have fire. Okay. You know what? Well, we wow. In five minutes, I'm given. Is it my turn next? Yes. yes. So that okay. means we have two more bobbleheads to give away and <laughs> this baby Zeno. Okay. It's good. so freaking cute. I love it. Yes. Look at that 3446 viewers now. That must Ooh. be the record. Yeah. It, it, it probably is the record. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. I mean, when uh, Miscavige hasn't been able to get 3,500 Scientologists in, <laughs> together in one spot since 1993. <laughs> yeah. um, it's true. <laughs> and, and even that, you have to factor in many of those were Sea Org members. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Bella. Mark, why do you keep getting rid of the comments like that? <laughs> because then it, we go back to this. Right. Yeah. But then you make Aaron lose his place, I think. No, 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 that... you don't. Oh, you don't. okay. It's just... okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. Um, you want me to not do that? I won't do it. It was the first time you mentioned it. I've been doing it whole, the whole time. It puts the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose again. Okay. Take it easy. <laughs> okay. Then. Wow. Are you going to do that the pee-pee dance? That really fast. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Now, now, boys. <laughs> Well, no, that's what he does after he says that. He does the pee-pee dance. Uh, uh, it's, uh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Trinity Devane. I love watching Mike's face whenever anyone brings up Marty or asks a question about him. <laughs> so he good. is over you, it. You know, it's so funny. We haven't been being asked that question in the I last know. several weeks. It's kind of, it's good. Yes. Yep. I think my face got rid of it. Yeah. Got rid of the question. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, uh, I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit. Oh, here's what I've been meaning to click on. James Petter. I've heard you all talk about the Edie Hamburg. A Wibka. How do you say Vibka. the name? Vib Vibka. 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 Oh, Jesus. That's her first name? Yes. Yeah, Vibka. Vibka Hansen. Vibka Hansen. Vibka. Uh, being assigned to the RPF, which seemed bizarre. Were there other non Sea Org staff members or even public that that happened to? Well, yeah. yeah the other one was Jurgen Denker. Well, there's a bunch of other ones. Even that guy. What was that guy's name that ran the museum at the uh, uh, Fort Harrison or the in Flag? Frank. Yeah, Frank McCall. But yeah. he he was originally in the Sea Org. Well, I know, but he but was out of the Sea Org. Sea Org, and then and got brought back to be put on the RPF. Yeah. For That's what? Okay. I, didn't, I, I didn't know that. For what? Oh yeah, because he was a squirrel. <laughs> yeah. L. Ron Hubbard said Frank McCall is a squirrel of the first order he was in the uk doing something or other i can't even remember what and he came up in one of these evaluations that hubbard was having done called the confront of evil evaluations that were finding all of the external influences in scientology organizations around the world which was the beginning of wise and how wise came to be created to get Scientology businesses out of orgs, stealing staff members, stealing mailing lists, blah, 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 blah. Got it in. Um, and <laughs> Frank McCall came up on one of those things and Hubbard had a real, a real dislike for Frank McCall. Frank McCall was the original captain of the Athena and had been busted from, for being insolent to Hubbard. And then he'd left the Sea Org. He was out in the UK squirreling away in, <laughs> according to Hubbard. And so he was brought and put on the RPF. Wow. You know who else was brought and put on the RPF on the Apollo? The Deputy Guardian United States, Bob Thomas. Hmm. Nobody hardly knows this. Bob Thomas shows up on the Apollo and 
when Guardian people came to the Apollo, there was only like three or four Guardian people on the Apollo outside of Mary Sue Hubbard. Nikki, her communicator, Fred Hare, who was like CS, CSG, Mary Sue's post was Commodore Staff Guardian, and Fred Hare was CSG assistant. Anybody else who came, came to visit for secret meetings and then went again in the middle of the night kind of thing. Bob Thomas shows up and he's in a black boiler suit chipping the railings on the Apollo. And like, holy shit, I was a deckhand then. And I'm like, who's that guy? And people are like, it's Bob Thomas. He's the deputy guardian of the United States. Like, what's the, what the hell's he doing here? Nobody was allowed to talk to him. It was like really weird. So he was another one. If anybody who's watching doesn't know, the Guardian's mm -hmm. office is was the Dirty Tricks Department of Scientology before it was called the Office of Special Affairs, what it's called now. But it was like this, those were the guys that hired the private investigators. And the Guardian's office just happens to also be the organization that per per perpetrated the largest infiltration in the United States government in its history. And you can look it up on the internet. It was called, what was it? Operation Snow, Snow White. White. Operation yeah. Snow White. Yeah, and what about um, three months after Mark and I escaped, they told us to come back and do the RPF. Yeah, they Three did. Three months later. Yeah, that was a firm no. So and guys, how it... long after you guys blew were you sort of in uh, uh, officially still in good standing? Well, that's a complicated question, as with anything in Scientology. Uh, if you were to ask my family, they would tell you that the day after I escaped, they were called into LA and told they could never speak to me ever again. However, I contacted Kirsten Catano at OSA a week after I escaped and said, Hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm out of there. I'm not coming back. We're, you know, I'm with Mark, but I would really like to be able to speak with my family. So tell me what to do. And then that started this whole conversation. Well, Greg Wilhair called me, said, well, it's on hold. Just come back and get sec checked. You're not, you won't be declared. Even though they had issued They'd already a suppressive done it. person declare the day after she <laughs> left for three months, they made out like, oh, we'll figure it out. It's all good. Da, 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 da. Yep. And when we went and picked up my stuff, which we have to do a video about that. But we when do. we picked up our stuff, they gave me an envelope. And in the order in the envelope was our SP declares that it had been issued uh, in January. They were dated right January after. 24th or 25th, which yeah. was the day after I escaped. So. So, yeah. The answer right. to your question is either one day or three months, depending on who you, who, who you who ask, you, who you're listening to <laughs> in Scientology. Yeah. Incredible. Um, wow. Jen W. Australia, Melbourne, finally caught alive. Love you all, especially Claire's interviews. Yay. Nice. Thank Excellent. You, Jen. Um, it's bobblehead giveaway time. If you're in the comments and you want a bobblehead, um, tell me that you do and I will pick it. I'm gonna do the, you know how I like to do this. I like to go five, four, three. <laughs> you can do it, honey. It comes after three. Two. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. I'm gonna look away. I'm gonna look away. Uh, there. You <laughs> missed it. No, I got it. I hit it. I would love a bobblehead or a baby Xenu. Johnny Raider. Okay. Um, Claire, you pick. Does he get the baby Xenu or does he get the bobblehead? Well, you were doing the bobblehead giveaway. Okay, bobblehead. So bobble Sorry. Head. You're going to get yeah. a bobblehead, Johnny. We, Send we Claire an email. We have to announce it. There, there are specific people that really want dibs on that baby Xenu. So. Okay, but am to I giving fair, another one away? Or, cause you, no, I'm, you... I'm giving the baby Xenu away. I reserved that for me. Okay, good. So, But I can give one more bobblehead away. Yep. Because we have two. We had a bonus just come up in here, right? Yes. Yeah, why do you get to give it away? Because yes. it's my turn. Okay, rock, paper, scissors, boys. Oh, you want to do it? Let's do it. You ready? Aaron, are you ready? I wasn't in the mix for it. You guys were. Okay, you ready, oh, okay. Mike? Yeah. Okay. Ready? <laughs> you ready? Now, Mark, Mark's been known to cheat at games of chance. Ready? <sighs> Mike wins. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Also, good, good. not games of chance, <clears throat> games of skill I'm known to cheat at. Not games of chance. Like bullshit? No, like card games. That's a game like of card skill. games. Yeah, like bullshit. That was a game of real skill. Uh, Mark's, Mark's, referring to the car- Mark's, refer- uh, Mark's referring to the card game called Bullshit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Have I ever played that game? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you remember the aces in the pocket? Yes. That was Bullshit? That was the game we were playing? Yeah, and you yes. have to play. Oh, you have, I don't you remember. You call the person on it. Oh, my gosh. I, oh, I don't like remember what the game was we were playing. So often, I don't remember what they're called. Anymore. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> Is that a game of skill or a game of chance? It's both. It's okay, a game there of you go. skill so of reading people. I, so I, my argument stands. There you go. <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah, that's. I think that's what you said when we caught you. Well, that's my line. When you catch me, that's what I'm going to say. That's what I've been taught. I grew up All in right. a cult. That's what they taught me. <laughs> Lori Plays asks, been meaning to ask Mark, did you ever want to join Scientology? In your book, it seemed like you ended up there um, you just ended up there as you would lose caregivers. Yeah, I basically was in a bad situation where I think at the time I was like either 14 or I just turned 15. And um, I wasn't living with my family. I was living with another family. That family, that got, the kid that was my best friend, I was living with him and his family. Well, he got recruited for the C organization. And then I ended up bouncing all over the place trying to live places. I was paying rent. I had to pay for my own food. I had to get to school. I had to do school. I had to get home. I was basically on my own at 14 years old. And I was I was running out of steam trying to do all that. And then the Sea Org came in and they're like, hey, you want to go to Oklahoma and be a, help people get off drugs? And I was like, and they're like, you'll get minimum wage and this and that. And the other thing, I was like, mm. And then um, I didn't want to do it, but then they were like, "You don't have to finish school. You don't have to. Work. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that." I was like, "Oh yeah, that's gonna be way easier." <laughs> Little did I know that didn't end up uh, happening the way they said it was. So yes, it was a more of a wrong place at the wrong time. So yeah, I didn't want to do it, but it was the. I thought it would be an easier path than the path I was on. So. Sucks to suck. That's what they say. <laughs> Make a sense. Uh, um, Jen Nelson. Mark, I just finished your book. Amazing. But you made me ugly cry the three chapters. Yeah, the last three chapters are definitely ugly cry time. So sorry about that. Sucks to suck, like I just said. <laughs> yeah, no, They. a lot of people tell me that uh, those last few chapters are pretty emotional. Sorry. <clears throat> There you go. Um, what are they about? No, just kidding. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Victoria Catherine, hearing about Diddy Man, which I guess is Miscavige. Oh, DM, Diddy Man. Okay. Making that guy, Mark Yeager, uh, build his cage and live in it for two years or more has made my blood boil. He needs his platform heels taken out from beneath him. P.S. Have a crush on Mike. <laughs> hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is an important message for Mark Headley. Um, escaping the cultiverse, a eh? says Shakira is also a huge Depeche Mode fan. I have heard this. I have heard this. Really? Hmm. Nice. Somebody else said that. I, I mean, okay, if you say so, I believe you. Her hips don't lie. Her <laughs> hips do not lie. <laughs> Um, I guess Shak- it, it's a little unusual for someone Shakira's age to be such a, a big Depeche Mode fan. No, it's not. What? How old do you My, think Shakira is? Younger than us. I'm looking well, that up. I don't think so. I think she's about our age exactly. And chat, and chat what do you GPT. Think, are you implying that only old people like Depeche Mode, Aaron? A, what, okay. No, Bail, not Aaron. Bail people. now. Bail. Go into <laughs> the next question. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do uh, it. Um, oh, look, Mark Fisher says that Frank Stallone and the Road to Freedom album will be a story on our channel. Mark Fisher was a producer on the album. <gasps> Excellent. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's perfect. amazing. That's exactly, that's exactly the sort of stuff that I think is great. Yes. By the way, that, Aaron, Shakira what? is the same age as me. How? <clears throat> 40? 17. Not, she's 49? 46. 
<laughs> she's 46. She's not 49. Shakira's 46? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, there you go. Yes. Oh, she looks she's... great. I was going to say I thought she was like 35. Yeah. You know? Um, Claire, this one's for you. Okay. Will Claire ever ride a motorcycle again? I did. I did get back on the motorcycle, but I'm done with it now. <laughs> yeah. When we when we escaped, um, I escaped on my motorcycle. And when we went to go pick up our stuff, they had loaded Claire's motorcycle into a U-Haul. I was, soon, yeah, I was going to try and it, copy Mark. I was going to yeah. try and copy Mark. And I memorized all the highways from California to Kansas City. The problem was... I was born in a cult and I didn't realize that in January I was planning to drive a motorcycle through the Rockies. <laughs> yeah, bad plan. Luckily, I didn't go that route. Yeah, she said that. She said, I can come on my motorcycle. I was like, no, you can't. I had done the calculations of the how much mileage, like how many miles the, the motorcycle could do and how many dollars I would need to get from California to Kansas City because I didn't need to eat that was optional I'd already lost so much weight from not eating for months that that really wasn't a big issue and I had this whole plan that I could just buy a movie ticket and sleep in the back of the movie theater instead of getting a hotel room it's quite creative actually <laughs> yes this is incredible <laughs> okay here's a funny one uh what's in it for you says Marmite and Vegemite taste like motor oil I used to live in Samoa, and English chocolate is yes. fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess it, I was mentally conflating English chocolate with dark chocolate. You're not saying you didn't mean dark chocolate. No, no, no. no. Oh. Like Cadbury's or, you know, something of that ilk. It, over I there, see. Chocolate English in, milk chocolate. Okay. Yeah, any or any, any chocolate. Any yeah. chocolate in Europe is better than the best chocolate from America. Swiss chocolate is better than English chocolate, but American chocolate, somebody did say that China chocolate is at the bottom of the scale. Yes, that's true. But American chocolate is pretty low on the scale. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you guys have to help me understand what this means. Lisa Lee says, you're also inspirational and brave. I may be a yinzer from Pug, <laughs> but do I pronounce organization wrong or does Hubba Mike? Also, I get so angry at the Danny Masterson smirk for success this time. What does this mean, guys? What's a yinzer? Know. What's a yinzer? Don't know. Oh, I thought for sure this was some British humor. It might be. Could it could be. be. Yeah. Huh. We, all we've, right. we've all sort of lived in the U.S. for a long time now. Yes. Yeah. We're sort so. of out of the vernacular. This might need a uh, follow-up, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might need to do but some that, word but clearing Danny, on this that, one. That Danny Masterson smirk really is, mm. it is, it is really hard to watch. I yep. agree. Absolutely. Old DJ Donkey Punch. Yep. Yeah. Needs... If, and also, just so you know, Aaron, DJ Donkey <laughs> Punch, when I went there and I was sitting out in the hallway, he approached me and there was, we had a little interaction when I was there. And it was really weird. And he had not done it with anybody else. And he had, didn't do it with anybody else after that. And I think it was because we were doing a lot of videos on him. So if he recognized me out in the hallway, he's definitely going to recognize you. And But uh, he knew saying, you in real life. I've never met Danny. Well, yeah. But when I knew him, it was when I was young and he was young. So I don't know oh. that he remembered that I was the same person at that time. Oh, so I don't oh, know. Oh, oh. I don't know that he really knew me. Yeah, yeah I get it. That makes so. sense. Um, Mike, this one might be up your alley if you know what it's referring to. Rhiannon PTS, last podcast on the left said that David Miscavige almost derailed himself with an LRH skit that LRH hated. Does anyone know what the skit was? Sending love to you all from Australia. No, no idea. Never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Huh. I'm still listening to the... Hubbard series of that podcast. I'll listen to it and see if I uh, if it rings a bell. I do recall Miscavige would often say that um, Hubbard kicked him off the shoot crew and assigned him treason um, for betrayal, and that Miscavige would boast about the fact that he just inserted himself back in and took his hat back and got back on post despite that. 
That's true. Interesting. But I think he wasn't kicked off for making a joke or a right. skit or something. He was kicked off for incompetence. Yeah. As a cameraman. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Aaron, do you mind if I um, show one real quick? Go for it. Just because it's very odd. It says, uh, Kate Bowen. Thanks, Kate. She says, forget cracker liquor. In Mark's hate video, what amused me is them saying that Mark would send tourists tourists who asked for directions in the opposite <laughs> direction <laughs> lol <laughs> this, oh, this, oh, what you're a direction now, thief too well now i just want to tell you that i don't i think this is another one i don't know who did this video so i don't know the the circumstances of this thing but in addition to cracker liquors evidently i'm somebody who sends tourists in the wrong direction <laughs> now this is another question when would I have ever in my life had the opportunity to do this? When you were a teenage delinquent living in L.A. But what? I'm just walking around looking for tourists? No, yeah. tourists come and ask you, you know, where's Hollywood Boulevard? Or, oh, you know where? I see. Like, and oh, you, and, I see. Not in Scientology. And you up into the hills instead of down to Hollywood Boulevard, <sighs> you criminal. Well, you know. I, the only time ever tourists have ever asked me directions was when I was in Denmark for a while. But people would come up to me and they would say, do you know where the train station is? <laughs> and then I would look at them and be like, yeah, it's about two blocks down that way. <laughs> and then when they're walking away, they go, did you hear how good his English was? Because I had blonde hair and I looked just like any other Dane walking around Copenhagen. Well, but, see, um, this, that's where it comes from. But probably... I didn't give them wrong directions. I told them where the train station was. I don't know you... where these. I don't know who's making up these stories, but they're well, I mean... so bizarre. Like, did you hear about the time that um, Mark sewed a patch on the back of his pants that wasn't the same fabric as the pants? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I saw this and I was like, I've got to I've got to get over to this site. I've never ever been there, but it sounds like there's gold over there. There's gold in them there hills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we got to do another <clears throat> bubble giveaway. Otherwise, what? well, I get another one. I and thought then we were going well, to do, yeah, it. We're do, gonna do it all at the end. I thought we were going to do it yeah, all at the end. Yeah, you get to do two at the end. No, I Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, do it, Mike. Do it. You ready? Wait, what are we doing? Are we doing the baby Zeno? No, Mike, we, no Mike I've won that thing, head. but then okay. he never gave one away. He won, but then he didn't He didn't capture the moment and give it. He just I see. was I see. Okay. just sleeping on the job. Okay. But we gave it away, right? No, I gave one away. He won, and then we just went on to the next We've question. We've given four away so far. We have one oh. more bobblehead and a baby Xenu. So get ready, people. Get ready. Three, two, one. No, no, don't do it that fast. <laughs> yeah, you got to let it. You got to let the chat burn up. Yeah, people got to get to their computer. They could be vacuuming. They could be doing the dishes. They could be getting a little something. We're over 3,500 hey, right hey. now, too, by the way. Hey. Nice. You do things your way. Okay. I do things my way. Okay. I like to get it over and done with. Here we okay. go. Okay, okay, Bobble Only. Boy. Destiny. Oh, Destiny. Yay. Destiny well, wins look at it. That. How perfect there you was go. that? I yes. like it how she started a new thing. Bobble me. Bobble I me, love baby. That. Yes. Bobble go. me, baby. You know, speaking of lights, are your lights going off in the middle of this, Aaron? Well, uh, it's the same battery pack I've been using for a few for the last of my couple of videos. So battery like, pack. Got... I'm in a hotel in the middle of the East Coast, <laughs> and this sh this shit's all plugged in. <laughs> no, these are battery operated, bro. Oh, Maria, I just clicked on that just because I saw it. Thanks, yeah. Maria. I I turned it on to blue. Yeah, there you go. Blue works best for Mike. She picked, <clears throat> and he did. Bobby. Maria de Jesus Gutierrez. Thank Bobble you for that. Oh, you should see the rest of her name. Oh. <laughs> that's, ju that's just the beginning. No I'm way. serious. <laughs> I am serious. But uh, Maria, pull up, put up your whole name and we will read it out. <laughs> she, she's going to have to do an $85 super chat to write her whole name. 
<laughs> All right. Check this out from Marilyn Honig. Hey, guys, I'm sending Aaron and Mike's Duke of Chugs out sometime this week with a little something for Claire and Mark. Nice. Hence, it had something to do with body thetans. Oh, my goodness. Nice. You That's know, I've amazing. never, I don't know what a body thetan looks like. What does it look like? Does it look like a sperm? Anything it wants to be. <laughs> Anything it wants to? <gasps> it's like a shapeshifter, like from Harry Absolutely. Potter. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's wow. why you ask it. What are you? Nice. Oh, oh. you ask it a question. What are you? Yes. But, oh, when but you're trying it's to. A, it's a listening that, question. The only right answer is I am me. Is that how you no, get rid of it? that's who are you. Oh. It starts with what are you. <gasps> Wait. The question. Go ahead. Claire, Claire got distracted. She wasn't I did. even listening. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you fill me you're in? You're not forgiven. Claire, what? I know. I'm never We're talking forgetting. about body thetans and what they look like. And oh. I said, I said anything. That's why you asked them, what are you? That's and right. Aaron said, well, that's a listing question. The only correct answer is I am me. I said, actually, that's the correct answer to who are you? What are you is a listing question. And you get what? And that can be anything from an insect to a cancer cell to a dog to a car. And then once that item has been correctly identified, you ask the question, who are you? And yes. that is the procedure of new era dynamics for OTs. Wow. Don't you if, first, though, establish if it's a body thetan or a cluster? Yes, you do. But yes. I was... Yeah, he, was no, trying I to short, he was trying to shorten it up there. <laughs> Don't cluster. miss any steps, Mike. <laughs> okay, What's that? I... I have to ask a question relating to this as well because I keep getting corrected. When I when I do my short version of the description of each of the OT levels, I say that on OT3, you're getting rid of the BTs. On OT4, you're getting rid of the drug-addicted BTs you couldn't find. And on OT5, you're starting getting clusters. And someone said to me, no, 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 you do address clusters on three. So what the hell is the difference between three and five? Um, <laughs> five is the refined technique of how you get rid of body thetans and clusters. And in fact... Hubbard directed a pilot be done to put people, instead of onto auditing the procedures of OT3, find the volcano, run through incident two, all of that stuff that you do on OT3, to just have people start doing knots, start doing the same procedure. What are you? Who are you? Find a cluster or a BT and use that procedure because it is ridiculous to continue to use the old stuff when the new stuff is so much simpler and works so much better so if the difference that, is that's that it's all in in so if the difference is that it's a faster, more streamlined process of getting rid of the BTs in the clusters, what's the explanation for why there are more BTs and clusters to get rid of after already having finished three and four? Because nobody ever really finishes anything. But, they just but, say they're finished. But what's the explanation given to the pre-clear for, for why, why there's more BTs to handle? Uh, there isn't one. They're just told, okay, now we're going to address these additional areas of charge. And they all go, oh, okay. Hmm. No, wow. I don't think that there has ever been anybody that said, oh, I'm completely done. I do, hmm. I'm done with all my BTs and clusters after well, OT3. Yeah, no, isn't that, that's part of the end phenomena of OT3. Is that you have no more. Right. Right. But then, of course, there were ones that were impacted by drugs that you weren't aware of. And then there's other ones that were impacted by other things that you weren't aware of is the next set of questions <laughs> that you just you didn't realize you had them until they and, asked the question and recognize mm -hmm. that what happens is on ot3 you're solo auditing then when you get to ot5 they pull an auditor in on you and say okay i'm now in charge i'm running this show i've got the e-meter you've got unhandled bts and clusters let's roll and wow. so everybody just goes okay and then when they get Oof. to the end of OT5 and they've supposedly handled all their BTs and clusters, they go on to OT6 and learn, okay, now you're going to audit solo knots mm -hmm. and you're going to do more BTs and clusters. This time, 10 years worth more. 
because oh. now it's not just necessarily ones that are stuck on your body. They can be remote. They can be in Berlin holding up the Berlin Wall. And we so can on, bring down the Berlin Wall. They on could OT, be what, what caused the 9-11 disaster. On OT5, is it always things stuck to your body or can it be elsewhere? elsewhere. No, it can be elsewhere. But okay. it's not like quite as like OT7 is where it goes into the, okay, we're going to take full responsibility for the entirety of the planet. Okay. Mark, what were you saying? I just had one question. When you say cluster, are you talking about like <clears throat> Baby Ruth or like crispy beets and raisins? <laughs> Is that your peanut, only question, Peanut Mark? cluster. Peanut like clusters. a peanut cluster. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. But So like yeah. Baby Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, and then <laughs> no, just so you guys know, like I know we haven't... It's like a collision that happened in the volcano. Yeah, That's I know we causes. haven't mentioned this, but because we're coming, to, we're getting near the end... Um, Every time you hit the subscribe button on one of our channels, um, Scientologists, Scientologists, just a random one somewhere, gets 100 more BTs. So hit the subscribe button, um, and uh, we'll see what happens over there in Scientology land. Um, and, I, and I did want to show this, Aaron. The, this is, yeah, Yin's is Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh slang. slang. Out of all of the people, you were like, oh, I thought that was some English thing. It's from your place, aren't you? Isn't that your town? No. No. Pittsburgh He's is not Philadelphia. But Pittsburgh's nowhere, <laughs> not even close to Philadelphia. It's well, it's not. in the like, same state. Yeah. The same I, can, I mean, state. that's close. That's the same not, state. Not, not in Pennsylvania. Not in Pennsylvania, Miles. What? <laughs> not in <laughs> Pennsylvania, Miles? <laughs> no. it, it's, certainly, it's certainly closer than England. Do you yeah, only walk in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Is that why they're called and, Pennsylvania? And yes. Out of all of us, you're the only one from that place that's that place is at. <laughs> Pennsylvania is the home of the Amish. Just think of it that way. They walk everywhere, you know, little buggies, carriages everywhere, yeah. no electric vehicles. That's not I mean, where you were from? Pittsburgh is like probably a four or five hour drive from Philadelphia. A four hour oh. drive on a buggy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On one of Ten them. Minutes. On one of them's motor vehicles. I was going to say 10 minutes on Aaron's little scooter, McScooterville thing he was dash dashing off to before the police rained down on his house. I could just imagine. They're like, there he goes. I'm like, you'll never catch me alive on this bad boy. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, man. Let's say we got a We Stand Tall thing. I'm waiting for the SP We Stand Tall. Come on, guys. Just make sure there's enough cowbell oh there's just so much that could be done with that yes so much that could be done with that you know here's one just because it is a question uh, we do get a lot let's not spend a lot of time on it though um Paige benson sending love to you all curious is there anything that you learned from uh scientology doctrine courses that is still useful to you today yes it's, what, what 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 do you guys like to answer for this question i i like to answer it can it can never be something that you can't overcome. There is nothing that you can't overcome. Scientology in the Sea Org does teach you that you can dedicate and persist and, and go through things that nobody thinks are possible to get through and come out the other side. And I think that that's a, an invaluable lesson that every Sea Org member walks out of the Sea Org with, and partly why so many Sea Org members or former Sea Org members are very successful outside of the Sea Org because they are persistent, they uh, take, never uh, accept defeat easily, and they are hardworking people that think that they can achieve things if they set their mind to it. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. Um, let's finish with this uh, one here. Um, Aftermath Foundation <laughs> fundraiser idea. Eight to 10 hour live stream marathon <laughs> with the SPTV crew uh, <laughs> reacting to Scientology TV. Oh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 South. Oh, that's great. We, we should really do that sometime. We oh, should, my goodness. Like, I'm doing, I'm doing, on my blog tomorrow, I, like, they announced their all new season, and I just... I went and I looked. Okay, let's see what this new season is. Oh my God. It's ridiculous. We it's could just... do it. You know how we could do it, Aaron? We could just do 
we just do a schedule and we just get a different person to pick when their hour is or their two hour period or whatever it is. And we can have multiple people on at the same time or we could just have one person and just have it streaming to everyone's channels simultaneously. And then at any point, any other people could join in. But no matter what, each person has an hour block that they're assigned to. And if other people want to um, pipe in on their blo- on their hour block or whatever, people can come and go, and we can yes. just just have it streaming full time and just brilliant. And just laughing and yeah, because just because we're streaming on all of our channels doesn't mean we all have to be on screen. Or That's right. Th- there, it's just going. So it's no matter which channel you tune into, you're watching the stream. That is such a good idea. And then, um, and it could all go to the aftermath. We should wait yes. at least a bit until we got like Janice and Mark and those guys, like once everybody's kind of up to speed and Amy and, you know, and everybody can just pick their little block and we could do it that way. I think it would be very fun to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it would play back though. That's a, that's a good question. Like when, what do you mean? It it would just be there. It was like a five hour video or something. Well, no, they're talking about a 10. They're talking about Eh, like, I know, but we don't have to do do a 12. We could do a 12 hour marathon. I mean, it, it would be there as a 12 hour video. Really? You can do a 12 hour video? Yeah, no one's dumb enough to do it, but you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen a six hour, I've seen a six hour video. Really? Yeah, wow. but I mean, we could also just do two hour blocks and then start the same thing again the next yeah, two sorry, hours and me. say, you know, first two hours, hours three to and four, hours five and six. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're at the two hour mark and we got some more giveaways to do here. We're doing this now, right? <laughs> yes. Yay. Claire, Look you've been this. waiting patiently. Yes, I have. I just love this little guy. <coughs> He's so special. Oh, somebody did say 12 hours is the max for a replay. Oh, okay. All right. So, baby Zenu. If you want a baby Zenu, get up in those comments. <laughs> Giving away a baby Zenu. Hold on, I gotta get to the. I am the... baby Zenu, baby Zenu, baby oh Zenu. I love that I'm guy. Way oh my god! Here. Hold on, baby I'm Zenu sorry. for my baby, baby oh grow Zenu. It is. Yeah, we're getting it's Grogu. we're getting about fifty comments per second. Really, you can see oh. that? I can see it uh, on the yeah the lot because I'm I'm on the starred comments, so I can oh, see yeah. the update on the live comments. Hold oh on, wow! Hold on. Oh yeah, it is going crazy right now. There we go. Baby Zenu, please. Reba. Reba, Reba, Reba. you got to email Claire. There we go. Thank you for participating. All you lovely humans out there. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, have you guys tried listening to yourselves on 2x speed? Because nothing beats it. <laughs> nothing beats it? Somebody guys, I said swear that. God, pull up your own. Uh, 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 well, the, you guys did one yesterday, right? Yeah. Yes. Just listen to it on 2x speed. You guys are both hilarious. <laughs> Everything you both say is unbelievably adorable when you're speaking really fast. Every time Claire laughs, it's just like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even do it. It's like, <laughs> 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 it's great. Oh, my goodness. I will be um, sure to give it a listen, Aaron. Thanks for the two recommendation. X, two X, not two one X. five, not one seven, two okay. X. <laughs> two X. <laughs> okay, so how do we end this bad boy? So we we broke thirty five hundred live viewers. Yeah, um, that's we're gonna we're gonna that's an easy benchmark to remember. That's got to be a record. Yeah, it was actually yep. thir- I think it was thirty five thirty five. Yep, nice was the number. Nice. Yep. So we'll keep track so we can uh, very cool our condition each week. And these yeah. awesome giveaways are, are de- <laughs> these awesome giveaways are so much fun. Yes, very much um, so. Now, technically speaking, if someone wants to fund bobblehead giveaways, you've got to send them under the Aftermath Foundation because we have no idea which channel got that super chat. We have no way of it's very hard for us to go back and find someone donated a oh. super chat and said, here's a, a thing for a bobblehead. Yeah, we'll, so it's fine. We'll just wash it out. But, yeah, we'll figure and, it out. But but and, I will say the ones that I did the way that people have been doing it is they order on the spshop.com yes. and in the notes they say like for example last week somebody ordered four bobbleheads and they said i just want one and the rest is for a giveaway or yes. another person said this is for a giveaway you can put it in the notes and then we that's how we do it and, and you can tell us if you want us to say it was from you 
this person said, I don't want you to tell say my name on, on the channel. Yeah. So you can do it anonymously or you can say uh, like Goldie <clears throat> has done it. Um, other people have done it and said, I'm doing this and I would like you to make sure it's from me or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and if, if the person d happens not to mention, I always check with them anyway by email just to be sure. All right. Um, this has been a lot of fun, everyone. Uh, hit that yes. like button. Subscribe yes. to all of our channels. Yes. And stay tuned tomorrow for more SPTV coverage of the Danny Masterson trial. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, guys. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, kick right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe 